Right here is just loaded. I got beetles off that like crazy. We'll start right here. Let me go get a beet stick and an aspirator. Here we go. So one of the things I do, I mean, I don't know if everybody's out here all yet, but we can yabber a little bit, which is, to me, this is an offsite hemlock, right? It's up against a building, it's got asphalt, but the feet of it are pretty good because it's been laying down needle duff, and this tree had been treated before. Or it wouldn't, it wouldn't, none of this stuff around here would probably be alive if it hadn't been treated because it, most of this is offsite, so it would have died. The other thing we'll do is we'll go over to that corner over there where they cut off the tops of those hemlocks where the power line is, and we'll go look at those because you're, you're going to find, we should find beetles and larvae in all these places. Now, I can use a white regular regulation beet sheet, but because we want to see, I want to show you guys larvae, we'll just pop this thing open. And now we got a colored background. And let's put it right here, and I'm just going to... So I did this with Jim and Blake out at um, Miller Farm Supply. So now they all wanted t-shirts, so I had to give everybody at Miller Farm Supply. Okay, let's take a look and see what we got. Um, here's a beetle right there. So, here we are. The nearest beetles that were put out here, I actually put beetles out over at Mary Gray's many years ago and told her not to cut her hedge, but of course they put beetles out, they cut their hedge, but the beetles had reproduced. They're all over the place here. There's, there's larvae in here too, we're gonna find. There's little tiny beetles in here called skimnilis. They're little tiny elongate hemlock scale predators. And so that's something that we'll talk about too, is if you look at this, this is actually pretty healthy because if I look at the crown of this thing, look how healthy it is and look at the size of the leaders that are going off of it. And in what I call my Christmas tree terminology, that's triple flush because it sent it out and then it grew laterals and then those laterals flushed too. It isn't just a leader, you know what I mean? It isn't just a straight little skinny leader coming out. So what I would do, of course, this is my life, right here it is, right here, right? So I'm sucking these things up. There's one there. Um, we'll, we'll also see some uh, larvae in here and there's larvae we can take and just clip samples. Um, You'll get a few, there's another beetle. You'll get a few, um, there's some fungus gnats in there and that would be natural because conifers are fungal based. Um, you will find some larvae in here too. The, they're just now starting to send out larvae. And I've got that beetle here. So if we need to take it inside and uh, I think that's a larva right there. So the larvae are white. That's why I'm using this beet sheet like this. And this is why the Forest Service people missed it. They were using a white beet sheet. So I stood up to Mark Mayer and I said, if you were working for me, I'd fire you right now. But he, he's a good buddy of mine that I had known for 20 years, so I could shuck and jive with him. And so here's another little trick that you can do. You can float this. Now that everything's in there, I can lift this up and let everything else float out like that. Don't let it slide, you know what I mean? I did a really good uh, J motion, shall we say. And then you go like this, and everything down here are beetles. I mean, there, there will be beetles and larvae in there, okay? So there are little, there are little tiny larvae in here. Um, let's go to another spot, or I'll let somebody, now, the one thing about using this color your after image with purple is not real good, you know what I mean? But So usually on a, a hedge like this, as I would get out my uh, beet sheet because I can jam that thing in, right? But if I just go here like this, go like this, and hit here, and then I can come up here, do this. So this would be a sunny day in Seattle, by the way. You would be working on a day like, here's larva right there. See that larva? That's about a half-grown larva, so that thing's probably eating about 150 eggs. This is what I love. I love to see those things, and I'm like, I wonder if, do they scream when you eat them? <laughs> right? Is it like an alien movie? Right? So here's your, these are your little baby. These guys, by the way, they glow green under ultraviolet light. So some of the crazy stuff that we'll do here in a minute is we'll uh, take some samples back in, and for those of you 
that had a dorm room in the 70s. You don't need to see this. But people that didn't have a dorm room in the 70s where we had all the black lights and all that stuff. So this is a really quick way. If, if this was a hedge next to a house, what I would tell somebody is it, keep your drip line. If you don't have needle duff, you can go buy pine straw and put down an inch or two of pine straw and you can make immediate needle duff. So if you look at these trees over here, right, they are, the one next to the road is off-site and stressed, but we can probably find adelgids on it. The one up further up is in better shape and it's been treated and there's hardly any adelgids on it. We can just, we'll walk up to the corner up there and see these other trees because those are in more of a, a natural habitat, even though the tops of them got cut off. So if I'm in Seattle and I'm getting paid by the bug, I am looking to find trees like that. I'm looking to find trees like this up next to a building. In Seattle, I go to a lot of cemeteries because these big old cemeteries all have hemlocks in them. And the state tree of Washington is Western hemlock. So every one of your state buildings like this would have Western hemlocks around it. So I don't really have a problem. The problem I have is every year this crazy thing's in patch dynamics where this year it would be like this. Next year I'd come back here, there's nothing. Because the beetles had just wiped it out. Now they may be over there, you know what I mean? It just moves around in the valley. Boop, 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 boop. So the adelgid gets what it needs, the beetle gets what it needs, and these trees are really nice and they're actually healthier than trees that don't have adelgids and beetles. So that's about it on this end from here. So we can just go, if you guys want to, let's just look at an off-site tree and then we'll look at kind of a semi-on-site tree. And then we'll take some samples back in and look under ultraviolet. So you got some whole ones there, but then also these. Oh, those are all eaten. Yeah, so you can see the Oh yeah, disturbance. right. And if you light that you up under ultraviolet light, it'll probably have poop all over it. Well, it makes it real obvious to see that it's right. affected because they're all Right. All the, now that, that can also happen if you guys are out, like right here, you know vehicles are coming by and hitting this, right? Bam, 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 all right? So sometimes you'll have physical damage, or if you have a gravel road or a dusty road and you have hemlocks near there, they're not going to have adelgid on them just because it's like insecticidal, you know, it's like dust, it's like diatomaceous earth. You've just got dust all over them. You won't get, you, you, you don't get many. Now, as you get on the back side of this where it's healthier, and probably here too, if you trim limbs off any time before now, you're hurting the tree because this tree's still getting photosynthesis. You want to wait till they just start to sprout out and then you can trim them because then they can make up for that. But if you trim them in the fall and the winter, you're getting rid of all the photosynthate that they would have been using. That's why you can look at like that hedge behind Hampton Funeral Home and it looks horrible because they just cut the top off of it at the wrong time of year. We're going to have a funeral for that hedge pretty soon. All right, we're just going to have a funeral for it. That'll solve all those problems. All right, let me punch this thing open. We'll see if we can get some here and then we'll go up. And so all you got to do here is hit this. This one's much sparser. You can't see as many adelgids in there, but I'm pretty sure we're going to find, we'll find stuff. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Just have to look around. Let's see if there's any larvae in here. This one's pretty sparse. And this is what happens too. I mean, a lot of times you hit, you may not get something. You can come back and hit the same thing two hours later and you'll get something. So we've got the little skim nilis. I'm gonna float this and then we'll see if we got any larva. Here we go, that's all I gotta do. And now I can look, cause the larva will hold on. There's larva right there. Those are your, that's your larva. They're all different sizes. There's not a lot of big ones yet because it's still early. The peak of egg laying is when red buds bloom. So down off the mountain right now, that's peak. Okay, he's got, this is, this is what we would normally use. If you use this and you don't know what larva look like, how are you going to see a white larva on a white sheet, right? You can't, right? But, but the nice thing with this type of thing is I can jam it in there like this and pound like that, okay, and set it out. 
So this would be really good if I was just collecting adults from like October until um, the end of March, let's say. And then from here on out, what's going to happen, and I can float it like this, and if there's anybody holding on, here's a, there's a fungus gnat. Um, there's probably some larvae in here if I look real close. That's a calembolin. You'll get, you get all those little ground. Everything that occurs in the ground around these trees is in these trees. Yeah, that might be a little larva. Yep. Okay. So let's go up. We'll just go up to the corner up here and we'll hit one more spot and then we'll come back and do some uh, scoping. This tree up here looks real good, but it's been treated and it has almost no adelgid on it. So what cues Laracobius eggs? Um, probably temperature and photo period, probably. And they're actually cued in, they actually can smell the honeydew of the adult, you know, they're smelling the poop of the, they, you know, boom, yeah. Just like a surfid, you know, they cue in on tryptophan and these aphids have that in their honeydew and it's like, boom. We'll go into this corner first, but we'll hit all these along here. Let's see, yeah. We'll go here. All right, so this beetle, this beetle can reproduce on hemlock woolly adelgid and it can reproduce on pine bark adelgid. It feeds on coolie spruce gall adelgid and it feeds on balsam woolly adelgid and I don't know if it reproduces on them. I, we've never done the studies to show that, okay? So let's use, yeah, let's use that guy. All right, now here's the other thing that I do sometimes. I get those umbrellas that have a, a post on them here so I can hold them up. So what we'll do here, I'll just hit some of these. These trees, of course, are in, they're in outbreak almost all the time. There's pretty heavy adelgid on them. And what, what I can do here is do this, and then come up. I want to hit this limb right here that's just loaded with adelgid. And then we'll do this. We'll just see what we got. We should rack up. Should have some stuff here. Come here. All right, here's a beetle right there. And let me tell you, normally when you do this, you know what I mean? I can't go out and find a bug on demand. You tell me go out and find a roly poly right now. You know what I mean? I bet you could do it. Oh yeah, I could. But but this is hard. Here's a larva landed there. Here, I'll put one in here. So remember, if you see me in the park, you guys, I'm just sucking hey, bugs. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. It's Friday, man. I'm out west. I thought I was in Seattle. I forgot. So yeah, it's okay. There, there's a larva. Another little one. We got. So you're gonna. We'll, yeah, we'll just carry some of these back. Yeah, you probably got one there. Let's carry, we'll just carry this one back because we've got a larva here. There's a larva here. You have to hit pretty hard to knock the larva off because the larva are inside those ovus, you know what I mean? You really gotta, gotta pound. So we'll carry this back. We've got two adults, we've got larva. We'll see the glow show. Woo, woo, woo. It's only Tuesday. Oh, the other thing I gotta tell you guys, every hotel room is a crime scene. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had the distinct pleasure of sitting next to a detective at a wedding recently, right? And I turned to this guy and everybody else just moved away from us because all we were doing was talking about what glowed what color, right? <laughs> and I know too much. We're not gonna, that's for another, we need, we need certification hours to talk about that. We can justify that. Oh yeah, you ought to see the stuff that goes on in my Christmas tree patch. You wouldn't believe it. What is that? Is that a... This is a Laracobius beetle right here. That's a girl, yeah. Oh, wow. That. Did you find one? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, we got two. We got larva. Two. I got larva. Right I'm going to bring it. Yeah, here. Bring it back. We'll put it here. Well, I just sucked it up, yeah, man. You just sucked it up. Yeah. Oh, it tastes good. That's not a larva, is it? Is that uh, just a... That's just a... It looks like a ball, but I got... We got larva. Here's a larva there. Oh, there you go. Let me We got larva on the other side. We were flinging them away, and we should have just been putting them in a thing but we, here's one there so we're about we're about halfway through egg laying they usually start about late January but this year everything was late like I could go by the wood frogs when the wood frogs was in my pond was after Valentine's Day so that's a colder 
season because normally around here it's usually by the end of January it has been okay so we've got it all it's all right here let's check it out let's go look at it you're right the nice thing that I can tell you right here was we have beetles just dripping from you know I mean we look how we're 10 feet from the back door and we're getting beetles so and there are tons up in these hedges around here awesome. so this is how change happens, right? Ooh, if happening. it has to crawl in your ear, it can do it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if that's what we need. Working with nature. Right? Exactly right. You have to ask a 20-year question, right? In our field, what's 20 years to a tree, right? right. Boo.